So NVIDIA is primarily an engineering company, or mostly engineers. And uh, so we write software, and the purpose of the software is to uh, allow advertisers to reach their target audience without any wasted reach, so they can reach exactly the person that uh, is going to buy their product or service as efficiently, as effectively as possible, and with some back-end uh, analysis so that they know exactly what they got out of their campaign. They can do a real ROI as opposed to some sort of estimate. Um, so it's true addressability to the consumer. Cool. And you guys, tell us how it's, uh, uh, it's, it's rather ubiquitous. Where does the software exist for the, from the, you know, in terms of this whole process? Our clients are uh, the distributors. So it's the cable companies, the satellite companies, and the telcos. And in our case, uh, our clients are DirecTV, Dish Network, Comcast, and uh, Verizon Files, and uh, AT&T, which, uh, which is also DirecTV. And that, if you add up that distribution footprint, the total number of subscribers that those distributors have is uh, about two-thirds of all the pay TV households in the, in the U.S., so it's about 68 million households under contract that we have. And of those, approximately half uh, are actually serving some form of addressable television. So, Michael, you guys are obviously uh, been ahead of this thing before addressable was really talked about very much. What what is sort of the attitude now around marketers, advertisers? What's the opportunity changing for the operators themselves? Where do we stand at a moment in time around addressable TV? Well, if there's a tipping point, we're either at it or soon to be at it. And by that, I mean that the distributors, without whom we wouldn't have a business, clearly understand what the potential is for them because it's a huge revenue enhancer insofar as their revenue per minute, per advertising minute is concerned. So they, they, they understand. They get it. They understand it. They're out there talking to advertisers and talking to advertising agencies. And so far as they are concerned, the, the advertisers and the agencies, it's been quite a process to get them to understand why this is better, but they're very much there and they're over, there are several hundred campaigns now uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, uh, I don't know, 700 campaigns or more that have been done addressably. Most, the vast majority, over 90%, have been successful and successful enough for those advertisers to go back and do it again, integrate it into their marketing plans, spend more money on it. So it's it's real, it's here, and it's growing quickly. So it's, it's a small sliver right now of the TV spend, but mm -hmm. how do you see that changing over the next year or two? Well, if you look at the benefits of addressability, both to the distributor and to the, and to the advertiser, they, there's no reason at all why this shouldn't increase and increase rapidly. So I don't know what the next year or two is going to look like, but I can tell you that a few years from now, if we're sitting here talking about this, then we're going to wonder why anybody ever spent money on linear TV without addressability, because this, this is actually so much better. There are really no disadvantages to it. You get reach, you get targetability, you get uh, the ability to, to, to measure exactly what you've gotten. So there's really no downside, so why not do it? Cool. And Michael, tell us about your business model, how you guys make money. So uh, we, we get a, a tiny sliver of, uh, of everything that's spent on addressable. So that's a rev share model, or there's also a licensing model. Either one will do whatever the distributors want to do. Cool. And. Uh, Finally, there's been a lot of talk about a limited number of addressable in the states, the two minutes per hour. Do you see the inventory changing much, or how might that develop? Sure. So the, the inventory that we've been using up until now has been the, the local two minutes that the, that the distributors have. But our technology works across, uh, across any form of advertising inventory. So, for example, if the programmers want to take a piece of their in-program uh, advertising inventory and turn that into addressable with all the similar benefits that we're getting in the in the local two minutes the increase in revenue the benefits of the advertiser and all that they can do that so that that can be done and that uh, that's always been our our vision from day one to make all all addressable all inventory addressable regardless of where the inventory actually is located and of course in other markets around the world it's you're not limited to the two minutes, I suppose. There's a big opportunity There's, there. One thing we've learned is that there are no two markets that are the same. So we are, we're chame chameleon-like. We're very flexible in terms of whatever the, the structure is of the, of the advertising, uh, the TV business in a particular market. We adapt ourselves to it.